Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here, studio here with um, Project 2.0 with the miniature quilled flowers. Uh, where are they? Oh shoot, I don't have them here. Well, I'll get them in a, at a break. Um, so I have been working on ideas for quilled flowers and found many crates on um, Pinterest that I really liked. I have been experimenting with the size and type. So the, the original one for the mini crates, uh, let me go get one. Nothing like being prepared, right? And so the original crate was four, now it, it's glued, the base of the crate is glued to a piece of recycled packaging. Um, and then there are four uh, coffee stir sticks, and then the rest of it is built with, I call them tongue depressors, um, but I think they call them extra large craft sticks or something on Amazon, I don't remember. Anyway, so I ordered some, and that's what this, the walls are to this, is one layer. Do I have a one layer? Yeah, here we go. Um, it's one layer of the stick with the rounded end sawed off or cut off. Um, and so that was the original formula for the crate. Then I used some stain that my husband had from building us a coffee table. And I really like the way it, I, I just like the way it looks. So that was the original one. Let's see. Then, and here's another original. So on the original, there were handles, you could do um, handles, but the woman that I saw where she had her demo is she used matchsticks for the handles and I don't want to buy matches because I have no use for them. Everything's electric here. Um, and I don't do candles either. So what I did was when I cut the ends off of the insides, I took these little bitty things like this and then I cut them so that they would become a handle. If you can see, this is the same right there. So I took the little handles and put them on the ends so that, you know, like, you can carry it. Then I decided that I like this idea so much. And there was another version of the box where she cut out holes in the ends. All right, so this is the version where she cut out the holes so that you could put your fingers through there, you know, like if you're carrying a crate on a farm. And I liked the holes. This is the first time I've done holes in the sides like this. She had another one where you could do holes. Let me show you this one. This one's not finished. Well, it is, but the stuff inside it's not. Then the other version was to take a drill. I have a Dremel. Uh, actually, these were, <laughs> these were done with a um, hole punch. Then I took some cotton thread that I had and I tied knots on the ends so that it has the handles like this. This is three inches. I thought, well, longer is better. Uh, no. The standard size is a two inch, as you can see the difference between the two. This has walnut stain from Tim Holtz stamp pad on it. I know. Uh, not stamp pad. Um, I did the re-inker and use the reinker with a paintbrush and paint it in there. I like the dark wood, but I'm kind of more partial to the honey color because it's lighter and I think you can see you can see the slats in the bottom much better. All right, so that's this end and this end. And then she came up with the end here. Well, then I saw another crate that I really liked where they I took the two tongue depressors and cut them, I think these are two inches. Yeah, about two inches, a little a little shy of two inches. Um, and put those side by side and glued them on the back of uh, packaging. Then I decided that I would like the front to have those slats, not the bottom, because I like the way it looks. So then I took three of the coffee stirrers and I glued them one on top of the other and taped them with um, this kind of tape so I would lay them flat down on the table like this while they were when I 
glued them together and some of them are glued together with PV, uh, PVA glue but I did start using wood glue because I think it holds better. So I glue them with a toothpick down the middle, take my tape, tape it, flip it over and just set it aside over here and let it dry. See here's three that were left over from something else. <laughs> I'm getting quite the leftover collection. So then, um, anyway, so then I like the way it looks on the front. So I decided to go ahead and drill holes in the thing for that's yet another way, you know, another version of handles for these crates is the solid one that was supposed to be a matchstick, then the rope one where the two holes are punched in the side or drilled in the side, and then this one, I used the Dremel, and I, I don't, I didn't have any kind of a tool I could use, so I just drew an oval and then just drilled the holes in it with the Dremel over and over and over. And then finally, my husband said to use a file. So I forgot I had this tool in my arsenal. And if you listen to it, it's got other blades in the bottom. You have to unscrew it. So I just took this when all the other stuff was done, and I rammed it in here, and I just, you know, smoothed it out. Now, it's not perfect, but I don't really care because... It's got that rustic look. So let's see. That's that. Then last night I decided that I like this look so much with the slats in the front that I did slats on the front and the back of it. Now these are never even. I try my best and I cut some of the sides off. I use sandpaper. I'm going to probably have to take the Dremel sander and sand that down. But it only takes two and a half stir sticks. So what I do is I glue three of them together and then I take Tim Holtz scissors and I just cut the stick and it works great. Okay, that's that. So there's all my little crates mailman's coming. So, I've made, let's see, where is it? I think I've posted a lot of this already, either in a, pre a previous video or on Instagram, all these little potted flowers that I made. So three of these will fit in the three inch um, crate. Then I, I, I decided that the three inch was way too long and the two inch probably was the perfect size. So then I got a little carried away. <laughs> I made a whole bunch like this. And here they are with the handle on the end, like I showed the empty ones. So I started quilling um, miscellaneous flowers. And they fit three of them without the pot fit very nicely in the two inch box. Did I mention that I made a lot? <laughs> so here's number two. There we go. Oh, and wait. There's more. And then there's this one. <laughs> Where I put big leaves on there. I tried a new experiment. I saw a video about um, leaves. So I glued some leaves onto the flower stem itself. And then I took some and wound them around wire, cut the paper around wire so that I could put the leaves anywhere I wanted in here. Because wrapping these things individually with all these different, ugh, it's a lot, it's a lot. So there's those. Well, because I have all these, I'm like, well, I'm running out of space to put certain things in certain places. So I got a bright idea and decided that I'm going to make a shelf for my little creations. So this whole thing is made out of scraps and the large craft sticks, tongue depressors. And this is what I did. I have four, that's the base, then glue two, and you can see the efforts here that I did the twos. Two, two, two and two. Um, they're not even, they're not perfect, but they look rustic and they hold my flowers and really that's all I care about. So here is, and when I put the middle section in, 
I made sure to put this on the bottom before I put this in to make sure there was enough headroom. And there's enough for these two, but this one for some reason did not go well in there. So I ended up putting them, I'll end up setting this when I hang it, I'll end up setting this red one on top of the yellow and the white. Um, so this one's unfinished and I have a second one and I'm probably going to have to build two or three more of these because, and I, they'll get nicer as I go <laughs> because I'm a beginner at this and I'm not very good with the Dremel tool, but I'm just good enough to be dangerous. <laughs> so here is the other one. Now I did this one so it would look old and crappy. So here is the other one that I did. This is the first one I did. Yeah, this is the first one. So I had this idea. I don't think it went very well, but you know, if you don't try, you don't find out what works and what doesn't work. So I painted it with the Apple Barrel White because I have like almost a full bottle of it and I need to get rid of it. Um, and then I took a sponge. Actually, I took a, a paintbrush and dipped it into the wood finish that I've been using on all the crates except for this one here and put it in there and then took a wet where'd it go it was I swear it was just here <laughs> what happened to it I was just looking there it goes I took a wet sponge and just tried to, to wipe the stain off and <laughs> it didn't go quick enough the inside's not so bad, but I'm not crazy about this side right here. Anyway, so it looks old and kind of rustic. So let's see if I can get these guys in here to show you how it looks with the rustic look. Oh, come on. So there you go. That's what it's going to look like when it hangs on the wall. You won't see this part. All you see is like what's behind the flowers and you barely barely see that because there's really not that much room in here. These are probably three inches wide, two or three inches wide. You know, if I measured, that would be helpful. Two and three quarters inches across, a little over two and three quarters. But when I made this, this first one, I only made it with one stick I made it with, you know, one of these, and I realized that was really dumb because these are thicker than just one of these. So then I had to go back, pull some of it apart, and then go and then glue the doubles together because the single was not going to cut it unless I put something really small on it. So there you have it. That is the fruit of my efforts. I think for this last week, two weeks, I've been working on this stuff. I'm having such a good time with these little things. I've been quilling for many years. I mean, I don't make a lot of fancy stuff, and I don't, you know, make a lot of crazy things, just basic stuff, but that's okay. That's good enough for me. So, we have before and after. I think you can see the difference. This is naked. This is filled in. And this one, one may be a little taller than the other according to how I pieced it together, but it's good enough to wear... I can hang them a little bit side by side on the wall or I can stack them on a bookshelf. One's just a hair taller than the other and that's okay with me. I don't care. I will fasten something on the back some way or another. To I might get those sticky, um, uh, I can't think of the name, command the Velcro things so that I can move them around more easily and not tear up my wall. Okay, so that's it for me for today. I'm not showing you how to make anything. I'm just giving you an explanation about how I did these and what I've been posting on Facebook and on Instagram. Now that is the mailman. See you in the next video. Bye.